Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how uh, I have found to restretch or remesh uh, the frames that I have for screen printing. Uh, there are commercial units available, of course, you know, pneumatics and so forth. Um, the ones I looked at were close to $3,000. I'm not doing this uh, as a business. I'm not doing this every day, all day. I'm not getting paid to do it. I'm doing this as a matter of convenience for me. You may notice that I'm on a particularly large space here. I don't want to have dozens of screens. Um, you know, covering all the different meshes so that I have at least four or six or eight of everyone's screen size, you know, or mesh count, not to mention, you know, extras for different jobs and so forth. Uh, recently, I found myself I needed just one extra 156. I had empty frames and I, that I, you know, that I actually inherited, as it were, from, from my mother-in-law and uh, didn't have a way to stretch the screen on. I had the mesh I bought years ago because I was going to do it someday. Well, yesterday was the day and I got it figured out today. I'm going to document that. For you so uh, what I have here is I have this table is actually my exposure table that's why it has the glass top on here I put my screen and artwork and so forth up here and uh, I use a annealing pad as a pressure pad and then I put a bunch of weight across it and then I have my exposure lights that go underneath I actually have built it's actually pretty cool some LED uh, panels here uh, to expose these are UV LEDs to expose the, the screens anyway so it's my exposure table, and then I put some counter mats over there like you might find in a parts store. And then it doubles as my mounting table for my homemade one-on-one -on -one color press, uh, one-on-one -on -one shirt press, which actually does a pretty good job. It made those circuit boards for the lights. It also made this circuit board here. So it's, it's homemade, and it's, but it still it works very well. But anyway, uh, now it's going to do triple duty. It's going to uh, sort of, uh, uh, work as my screen stretching station. So, what I have here is I have some 80-20 aluminum extrusion, okay? and what this is, is this is their 15 series product, and you can find them by going to uh, www.8020.net, that's 8020.net. Um, I really like this stuff. It is, this is incredibly rigid. It's remarkably heavy for what it is, even though this is their light series, um, which means it has a little bit thinner webbing in here and also has this as hollow here on these four corners. Uh, but it's not cheap. This is this product right here is 45 cents per foot the last time I checked it. Or, sorry, 45 cents per inch per inch the last time I checked it. So, But it works very well. It's very rigid. And what's going to happen here, what I found worked very well, like I said yesterday, I monkeyed around with this until I got this uh, figured out is uh, I tried a number of things, okay? I tried th uh, 3 8 inch wood dowel, which fits in there very nicely, wouldn't bite against the mesh and the aluminum. Uh, so then I coated it in two wraps of my blue tape, and this is the super expensive Fancy Pants Blue Hawk Lowe's brand tape that I use for taping off screens and stuff. It's inexpensive, it's easy to come by, it works very well. But no, no worky. It would get up close to tension and then it would just slip. So that didn't work. Uh, the next thing I tried was just for grins. Um, I went down there and got some quarter inch. Uh, I forget exactly what this material is. One's vinyl, the other one is, I don't know what this is. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, it's kind of tough and slick, but you know, I was there, I thought I'd buy it and try it. No worky. Then I also got some vinyl tubing and this stuff is grippier and softer. I thought, ah, that's gonna get it. No worky. It still would continue to twist in here, allowing the mesh to go through and out. This will work, however, if you, once it's in here with the mesh wrapped around it, if then you'll shove a 1 16th inch dowel rod, or well, sorry, 1 8th inch dowel rod along the side of it over here, but pushing that dowel rod in on the second of the two parallel pieces is a booger. It's already tight. You try to shove that in, it, it, it's tight. It will work, it will hold, but it's not ideal. What did work very well is this is, I believe, half inch quarter round and this came from Lowe's so um, I believe this dimension is half inch that's that's half inch of course so they call it a half inch it's half inch radius obviously quarter round and this works very well it just fits in here it's it's not snug really but by the time you put the mesh on there it is kind of snug so that worked for me yesterday and that's what we'll be doing today uh, the, the uh, the next thing is, and this is really, really cool, the, uh, I wish I had more of these knobs, you'll notice I have two of these black knobs over here, 
Um, unfortunately, they, did, they only had three at Lowe's, so I'm going to put two on so I'd have them on one side. Uh, this is just a clamping knob. Uh, apparently, clamping is a technical term meaning that it can pass through the backside. Uh, they had other knobs down there which were not la labeled as clamping knobs. Doesn't matter, who cares? Just watch that some of them don't have a hole all the way through. So, like this where the bolt is way too long, it would actually bottom out. They had brass inserts and they would bottom out. In any case, runs through, very neat. What's cool about this 8020 product here is, and I'm sure that this was by careful design, uh, I'm not being sarcastic, uh, this is a 5 16 inch carriage head bolt, and if you'll notice, it just beautifully fits down in there. So what I'm doing is, I have these flat metal pieces. Now these, are, these started out in life as 12 inch long uh, pieces, and I cut them in half with a uh, reciprocating saw. Uh, they are found in the gate and hinge area, uh, gate hinge area, uh, brackets, similar brackets and so forth at Lowe's. I'm sure Home Depot and other hardware stores should have them. Um, I believe it's, uh, let's see, the brand is, beats the heck out of me, it's not marked. Um, who cares? Maybe Stanley, maybe not. It's one and one eighth inch wide. It's approximately, uh, it's getting close to a quarter of an inch thick. It's probably every bit of three sixteenths. It may be some millimeter, I don't know. But in any case, it's, it's quite thick. And then what I've done is I've bolted it down below here. I just ran the 5 16 inch carriage head bolts in here, snugged them up here, and that set my hole point down here. Drilled the hole, pinched it, and what's going to happen is now when the screen tries to pull this metal this way, it's going to pull this tab of metal over like this, over this way until it hits the top piece here, and it's got that leverage. It just it works very well. It doesn't go anywhere. The nice thing is that even with these fairly snug, you'll see I can lower it down. So I'm not going to be left with this nasty screen grabbing, love handle grabbing, whatever that's going to bite a hold of uh, things and tear it up. I can just pivot this down so when I'm done, I have my table nice and smooth again. And that's going to give us our pull. Basically, we're just going to tighten these, these bolts up. So uh, we'll get back to that. So that was, that was the first challenge, was how was I going to get a hold of the mesh? And the 820 extrusion, along with a half inch quarter round, solved that, it works very well. The next, the next challenge is how to glue this stuff down. Now your screen printing supply stores uh, online, the ones that I looked at, it's gonna cost you about $40 for 16 ounces of screen mesh adhesive. Reading around online, I find that the general consensus is that the Screen mesh adhesive is nothing but cyanoacrylate glue. That would be super glue. So I went and found some different super glues to try. Uh, yesterday I used this. This is a tight bond product. If you've done any woodworking, you're probably familiar with tight bond wood glues. Well, this is their CA or cyanoacrylate wood glue product. Uh, this is a medium body, and they have they have thin, medium, and thick, and then gel. And you presumably you're supposed to use the thicker stuff for the larger mesh counts. I'm doing a 160 mesh here. I thought I would try the medium. It seemed to work very, very well. Thin probably would have been a little too thin. I did have some troubles with dribbles running down the side of my frame, which is why this is now taped off in blue tape to keep me from getting some of that glue onto my uh, piece of, uh, onto my tabletop here because I don't want to peel it off like I did yesterday because it sucked. Now, if you've ever played with super glue, I also have this brand here, Bob Smith. Um, none of this was particularly inexpensive, and it was certainly not less expensive than buying. Each one of these cost me about $10, okay? So for about $30 worth of product here, I have six ounces of glue. For $40, I could have gotten 16 ounces. I, I, so in the future, I'm probably going to go and buy the commercial stuff sold by the screen printing supply houses. Now, the reason why I did this was one, for testing, and two, that I can get this quite easily in small quantities because apparently uh, cyanoacrylate will go bad period, and I've seen that firsthand with super glue tubes going bad, although keeping the freezer is supposed to keep that from happening. Now, I've only tried that recently. I've got a tube sitting in the, in the, in the had it in the fridge for, for a week and was able to use it again without any troubles, no crusties on the, th on the lid, so freezing it may be a good solution, but I'm not going to promise that. I haven't tried it long enough. So buying it in small quantities, even if it's more expensive per unit, is good if you're not doing a whole lot because it doesn't do any good to get it for 50 cents a unit instead of $2 a unit if three quarters of the units get thrown in the trash because it goes bad, okay? Anyway, so I've got these three different glues. Now, let me tell you something about this real quick. Uh, if you're ever taking super glue and you glue your fingers together like, ooh, isn't that cool? You can wiggle your fingers, okay? And it'll eventually come off. This does not. Don't try that. I accidentally got some on there and I thought, oh, okay, I'll just monkey around a little bit and 
stuck my fingers but good and had to go find the acetone and it took me about five minutes of soaking it in acetone and going back and forth like this before I got my fingers free. So um, this stuff is not that crappy super glue stuff you buy at the store. <laughs> this is serious stuff. Uh, I also got the accelerator um, and this worked very well. It was neat. Just sprayed it on and I mean boom that quick. It was set. I put my hands on it. it was the, the glue was set. Uh, the problem is the activator is only filled about the top of where it says instant bond right there. This is not a full jug of spray when you get it. And I suspect that maybe some of the, the contents have leaked out because that's two ounces, that's two ounces. This should have been full, but it was not. Um, but this is also about $11. So I have read that this is um, alcohol and uh, or that you can use alcohol and something to make it alkaline or basic. So I'm thinking that a little alcohol mixed in with... Uh, some baking soda or mixed in with maybe some pH up for pools, uh, pool chemicals, which I also use in electrolysis for cleaning uh, rust off of steel goods. Something like that might work. At $11 a jug, you can damn sure bet I'm going to try to homebrew something, okay? But this does work. It worked very well. Uh, the last thing I'm going to today, and this is what I'm going to try, and this is the last thing that I bought, was this that I got from Lowe's. Um, it says it has cyanoacrylate esters. I'm not even try to get that right. Uh, doesn't matter. It has that. This may be the same thing. It says no accelerator um, is needed. I'm going to try it anyway. It says it cures in 30 minutes. That's great. The nice thing about this is that for $10, I can buy four ounces. Now, if you did the math there, you realize that four times four is 16. Four times 10 is 40. So it's the same per ounce cost if you buy it in four ounces, not this. This is more expensive. But if you buy the four ounce container, it's the same per ounce cost as buying it from, at least where I was going to buy it, the commercial screen adhesive. That means that I can buy it in smaller quantities, I can buy it locally, and have it right now. Yes, I'm going to pay sales tax, but I'm not paying shipping. So today we're going to try this and see if this works. All right? So, uh, unfortunately, I wish I had more of these knobs. Uh, they only have three. I only put two on here. I'm going to have to wait until they re restock, and then I'll get these on, because this, this does suck. Um, having, to, having to use nuts over here. Okay? Anyway, so what's going to happen is... I'm going to get my screen up here. Get my wood ready. Don't say it. Don't say it. Okay. Here's one of the screens that I have. Like I said I, I sort of inherited these from my mother-in-law. She has given my wife and myself all of her screen printing stuff to use. In any case, I'm going to rescreen this or remesh this. I've had the mesh for years. I'm, I'm excited to finally get a chance to use this stuff. All I did was I went along and used some 120 grit sandpaper with a sanding block and just sanded it a little bit and then I used some acetone to wipe this down. The next time I get ready to clean one of these, I'm going to try some uh, lacquer thinner. I think lacquer thinner might have been more aggressive than acetone. Acetone's cool and everything, but um, it, not only does it evaporate you know, incredibly quickly, not that lacquer thinner doesn't, but it doesn't seem like it's got the, that uh, lacquer thinner does. But anyway, I've got it fairly clean. So this is going to go up on top of here. Now, these are approximately, and I swear these are metric dimensions, okay? This is not exactly 1.38. This is going to be about 1.38, but not quite. The 8020 aluminum extrusion, remember I said this was the 15 series? There's a reason why there's a 1 and a 5 in there. It's 1.5 inches, okay? They have a 30 series. Can anybody guess what, how many inches that is in each direction? So, I'll lay this up here. But, oops, this is below this level. So here's what we do to solve that. Super possible sticks. Tongue depressors, craft sticks, whatever you want to call them. Okay? There you go. I'm putting four diagonally under each corner. Okay? And that gets me a little bit above the air, the, uh, the level of the 8020 extrusion. And the reason why I do that is that means that the screen, the screen mesh is being pulled down over the frame, which is actually really awesome. Now, um, due to the magic of that I'm an idiot or disorganized or that my little son came through here and helped me, I am missing a super mega popsicle stick, so I'm going to walk over here and grab an extra. Okay. Like I said, this is going to raise that up so the mesh is pulled down over. The frame gets us good contact. 
kind of scoop that out. Um, I use the glass to kind of center up where the screen is and then take these, just back this out like I said I already did this. Now you'll notice that on the commercial units, at least the ones that I've seen, each one of these bars offsets the next one so it winds up making kind of a, like this, each one overhangs the next one, okay? So it means you can take this and make little bitty screens or really big screens all without having to change your bar lengths, okay? So this one is going to overlay, is going to cover the tail end of this one, okay? So let's go ahead and run this up to the, to the uh, frame. This one overhangs this end. Like I said, it, it's very unfortunate they don't have knobs everywhere. I wish I had knobs everywhere. It's slow as Christmas. It's going to make the video a little painful to watch. But um, anyway, so there we go. There's up against that. And this one overhangs this one. There. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We just need the mesh to throw on there and we should be in good shape. Now, one of the things that you can do. There's my mesh. Uh, I think we've got plenty of it. What I'm going to do here uh, is actually, I, I think it's pretty cool. And if you don't believe me, just ask me and I'll tell you. Uh, this is pretty cool. I'm going to lay this out here. Now, this one, I'm going to turn this around. This is still a factory edge over here. I believe I've got that right. And I'm assuming that whenever they package this, for me, from whichever place, I don't remember where I bought it three years ago, um, that it was probably cut pretty square. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to make it square to the frame, because what I don't want to have happen is I don't want the mesh running across like this. Is it really that big a friggin' deal? Probably not. But I'm going to try to make it as much where the runs this way are parallel to this, and the runs this way are parallel over here. Again, I don't know if it really matters, but that's how I'm choosing to do it. And it's my ball, I set the rules. Now, now that I've got that dropped into place, I have cut these uh, to various lengths. So there's one, okay. there's my other long one, and these are my short ones here. So I'll set those off to the side for a moment. Get a drink of shake like that. Okay. Now that the screen is dropped in there, and really all we're doing here is we're just trying to get a pocket starting here and if it pulls out it's not a huge big deal but it should stay when you have this was 50 inches when I had a whole other piece hanging over there was trying to pull out that was kind of a pill there we go pull this out set that up there and just kind of like pulling a sock on just work it there you go work it I see you baby shaking that ass I see you, baby. Okay, there we go. All right. Just push it on in there. It does get tight, and I'm not entirely sure why that is, but whatever, it doesn't matter. The dowel rod, you know, the, sorry, the quarter round may not be perfectly straight. There we go. Shove it back up against the frame. Make sure that you're touching. Okay. And now we'll go and drew this other one. And again, notice that this one overhangs here, so that means that one's going to overhang over there. Okay. Move the kitty cat out of the way. All right. And I'm going to do this to kind of get that pocket started. Um, what I also did, which may or may not show up very well, is you'll notice I rounded that off with sandpaper, okay? I didn't just cut it and try to shove it through there. It's rounded off with 180 grit sandpaper. I probably could have gone to 220 and then up to maybe uh, 320 or so, but I didn't. Okay, I'm going to hold the fabric here on either side, trying to keep that pocket. Pull it out, see how that popped back out. It's not going to be a huge big deal. Okay, shove that on in. And notice this one's going smoother for us. Excellent. Or for me, actually, you guys aren't doing anything, you're just watching. Um, all right, there we go. There's the sides. In. Make sure that our extrusion is up against that frame. And what I'm going to do, and this is what I did, I, I, well, I screwed this up yesterday. Let's just be honest with ourselves. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut strain relief here in the corners. Now this is important and I hope it will show up on the video here. We're going to cut our strain relief into the corners here in line with our overhang. Now what that, that's going to do is that's going to uh, so here in a minute when I get ready to cut this because I'm going to cut this before I shove that piece in you may already see that it's bunching up. Well if you cut it diagonally you don't have a sock leading into this channel right here and I had to use my other stuff that, that was not good. So I'll just take this and I could probably just take a razor blade up close to it. Okay, there, right there. That would be plenty good. Again, like I said, we're trying to leave ourselves a sock that we can pull on to our rod there. Say it. Okay. Same thing here. Remember, in line with that overhang. Yeah. We're not going all the way up to the corner of the frame. Uh, we don't need it that far up. Now, notice I'm cutting a little bit this way because the whole material is kicked that way. I'm going to cut it over that way so that when I cut this free and I get that strain relief that I'm looking for, see, it kind of popped out. Maybe it didn't show up. It doesn't matter. Kitty, I don't need your help. Okay. So, do the same thing. Drop that 5 16 inch dowel rod. Fits nicely into that 80 20 groove with the fabric. Just shove it down in there. And it makes a liar out of you every time. There we go. We got that. Get ready with our quarter round here. All right. Again, kind of get a sock going here. And there is probably something neater. I'm going to pull that tight first. There's probably something neater for holding this stuff together in here, but this worked for me. And like this is only something I'm going to do occasionally when I need to, you know, uh, not something I'm going to do on a whim. Like, oh boy, I feel like remeshing screens today. I'm going to go do this all day. No. But when you consider that I'm going to remesh this thing for about six dollars, including mesh and adhesive, uh, versus twenty-five dollars plus shipping to get another one. And that I can keep meshing my hand inexpensively and plenty of it, that this becomes uh, kind of interesting. I mean, it becomes something you might want to consider doing. I don't know why sometimes. Sometimes it's a booger. I could probably sand those down. There. Okay. And the last one. Frame. Okay, drop that in. Get your pocket started. Your sock. Intermission. I'm going to pull the memory card on the camera, dump that, and uh, pick up, and we're going to stretch this. Okay, so after those important messages, we're right back. Uh, we're about to stretch this puppy. Let me tell you a couple details, though, that I, I feel like I kind of left out there. Uh, the extrusion I cut, I had this left over for another project. If you order this directly from 8020, you can tell them down to the, I think, even the eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch, how long you want the stuff. Um, I had some left over from a CNC plasma table that I built, so I had a couple of decent sized sticks. Uh, I cut this one, this is 20 inches by 24 screen, more or less, like I said, for its metric. Anyway, I cut it to 21, that I cut to 25, made sure I could overhang the screen. And then what I did was um, I centered the pull points up Basically, one quarter of the length, one quarter, another quarter, so half the length, and then a quarter. So I've got an even pull across there. And this stuff is so rigid, it doesn't bend or flex. I mean, not, not, in a pre, not, in a no, not even a noticeable amount. I mean, I can't see it when I've got these things in attention. So, um, I think that, that pretty much covers it. Hopefully, from what you've seen here, if you're handy enough to use the tools to do so, to build one, 
you should be able to, um, you should be able to, yeah. Anyway, you should be able to build it. I just realized I didn't sync the uh, audio after I stopped and started the camera. Oops, we'll figure, I'll figure that out later. Clean that up in post-production. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna start with the hard one first. So I don't have nuts over here, don't say it. I have nuts over here, I don't have nuts over there. I'm gonna use that, I'll do that last. Yeah, I really, this, this, I've gotta get those knobs, this kinda sucks. Um, and I don't have a socket that's deep enough to get there. So I'm going to use my crescent wrench because I don't plan ahead well enough to remember to bring the half inch gear wrench up here. Okay, and I'm going to pull it over. Oh, I already got the tension. That's nice. Very, very nice. All right. There. Now we'll side to side on it right there. Got front and back, side to side. Okay. Pull back. See how much easier it is with knobs? Okay. Okay. Very nice. Now, I do not have a tension meter. I don't, don't have one. Don't know anybody does have one, so I could borrow one. Uh, I asked my screen printing supplier because they're not that far away from me. Uh, even though they're internet enabled or in online and whatever. And I said, hey, do you have one? No. So apparently they send screens out to, out to be rematched. But there we go. Got good tension there. So what I'm going to be doing to determine if these are uh, properly tensioned and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, try to pull equally from side to side so I don't overstrain the corners and such. What I'm going to do, oh nice, that is really nice. Uh, I'm going to use the tap tap test compared to a factory stretched string. We're not building uh, mesh frames for NASA here, okay? So it doesn't have to be Perfect, it just has to be really damn good. Very nice. Instead of the knobs, this would be a lot faster. rod over here is hanging in, so um, it's hitting rather than the wrench, and that's kind of hanging in the butt. Doggone it, that's nice. Yes, that is feeling very, very awesome. Now, the first one I did yesterday, I noticed it felt like it lost some tension after I glued it and cut it free. And that's probably because the frame you know, will uh, flex to a certain extent, although I can't believe it stretches that or extent moves that much. Okay, so I'm going to make it a little tighter than what I had yesterday. Okay. That feels pretty good. Okay. Excellent. Alright, that's good enough. So I'm going to fold these little ears back and if they keep giving me any crap like they are, I'm going to go ahead and take the scissors and cut those off and we're about to glue this and find out if that, uh, other, that other glue works. 
The worst that will happen is I'll waste some mesh here and we'll both run something. Okay? Get rid of that so it's off my glue area. That's fine. That's not really in my way. That's not in my way. We'll grab our glue. And for a glue spreader, I'm using this old, I don't know, some kind of spatula thing. It was my mom's. I, I, I don't know. It's a something or another, okay? And that'll be the way of calling our way home. Okay, there we got that audio sync this time. Okay, uh, here we are. We're about to put the adhesive down and try this out. Um, I, I know this stuff says it doesn't need accelerator. I'm going to use the accelerator because I'm just crazy like that. The first thing I'm going to tell you is this stuff is a lot more uh, gelatinous than the stuff I used yesterday in the uh, tight bond product. This is a lot thicker body, which is probably not a bad thing because I did have to fight yesterday with the tight bond product. Um, oh, that's spreading out nicely. The tight bond product dripping off of my spreader tool and onto uh, oh yeah, cyanocrylate. God bless. I should have remembered to open a window. Jeez. Anyway, the liquid. I guess I shouldn't have to worry about it spreading down and dripping down. Oh my God. Yeah, that was awful when it dripped down. Okay. Excellent. Well, it's spreading out nicely. I'm not sure I don't uh, actually uh, like the thick body better, actually, than the thin stuff. I am having to spread it in, but I don't think that's such a bad deal. Okay. I, there's definitely some experience that comes into play with doing this. Spreading it, that is. And the nice thing about doing this yourself is that you're not beholden to some service to do it for you. It means you can do it in-house, and I'm sure that with experience, this is going to go faster and faster. So that, yeah, you're not going to wake up at 9 o'clock in the morning, and, or at least show up at the shop at 9 o'clock in the morning, and just suddenly go mesh, you know, a dozen screens for the day's production. But, if you're in a pinch, you'll get some good stuff out of it. Okay, I haven't seen I'm, not okay. uh, I'm getting out into the screen, which is not going to hurt, it's not going to print there anyway, but it's still not ideal. Okay. And I'm not sure how important it is to get this coated all the way across that tube like it is on the professionally made ones. Those guys have a boss breathing down their necks, you know, about appearances and so forth. And it may not be necessary to hold this mesh, so um, you can probably not kill yourself over every little stinking detail here. Okay, and last run. I'm putting a little bit across there, a nice puddle, and then doing the streak. That puddle gets me my initial spread, and this is going to feed it as I bring it along. Okay? I'll get that out there. Oh, man, the fumes. Jeez. Yeah, you're going to want to do this with better ventilation than what I did. Oh, this was not well thought out. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that right there. Come back a little bit more here. There. Oh, yeah, baby. That's super sexy. I love it. Okay. Well, there we go. Now, let's see if the accelerator works. I'm not going to wait for 30 minutes for this stuff to set up. First, I'm going to try to wipe the liquid glue off of this. Now, you know what's interesting is they say that this stuff won't set up um, without moisture or if it's in an acidic environment. So I wonder 
if you could maybe add some acidic moisture like some citric acid in water to wipe this down to keep it from setting up um, as you're trying to wipe it down. And the reason why I say acidic acid is, uh, or sorry, citric acid, acidic acid, jeez. Anyway, citric acid, the reason why I say citric acid is that I happen to keep some of that stuff in the stock ready for immediate delivery. Uh, in the form of Lemmy Shine detergent booster, which does an excellent job um, in tumbling media for cleaning brass for reloading. Um, crazy shiny brass. Anyway, it's an acid. But anyway, that might work for cleaning these tools up. Right now, what we want to find out is if that glue is going to set up with the accelerator uh, like an idiot. I'll just test this and go, yes, that's still wet. Yeah. And they say, like, this is uh, alcohol. You can do some reading online about using alcohol to speed dry cyanoacrylates. Um, the alcohol might be a great idea because it's got the moisture that the cyanoacrylate needs to cure, but it's not 100% moisture. It's got the alcohol, which will evaporate very quickly. Oh, yeah, that, go that goes quick. All right. Hot damn, look at that. It's not, the glue is not wet. No wetho no moro. That's Spanish for that's not wet anymore. Um, that is super badass. Oh, hell yeah. I love it. That is just awesome. Feels... <laughs> Hard? Yes. Okay? Well, there you go. You saw me spray it. And you saw me touch it before then it was wet. So I spray it. Now it's not wet. And the, the real test... There you go, folks. That's stuck. There you are. How awesome is that? That is, and please God, I don't let me have any dribbles. Thank God. I do not have any dribbles. So I didn't get any goop down on my tabletop. So there you go. That worked. I love it. Easily uh, purchased at uh, Lowe's. Same cost per ounce in the four, if you buy the four ounce containers is buying the commercially uh, produced or commercially sold stuff for screen stretching. Well, at least it worked. You know, same cost and it worked, so whatever. And then the Instant Bond Activator, but at $11, $10 and change, this was, this was not the way to go. Um, try, we'll try some uh, rubbing alcohol and maybe some pH up. There you go, folks. I hope this helps. Um, have, a, have a great day and happy uh, screen printing. Later.